So this picture you can see we have a endo cervical canal which is lined by the columnar epithelium and then we have ecto cervix which is lined by the squamous epithelium. The point at which they meet is known as the squamo columnar junction. So uh, the original squamo columnar junction is known as the old uh, squamo columnar junction but once the uh, baby that is the female she becomes mature. Uh, this cervix increases in size and uh, the junction this old squamo columnar junction it changes its position uh, as soon as this uh, columnar epithelium is everted out which is known as ecto ectropion and then after it gets everted out it is exposed to the vaginal pH and once it gets exposed to the vaginal pH it becomes metaplastic and changes into squamous epithelium. So uh, this forms a new squamocolumnar junction which is more towards the internal os and uh, the whole area between the old squamocolumnar junction and the uh, new squamocolumnar junction is known as the uh, transformation zone. So uh, here is this the most of the cervical pre-invasive and cervical cancers arise. How do we uh, know that key which is the old squamocolonar junction we can see through the colposcope we can see through the nebothian cyst nebothian cysts are actually the glands secretions which gets encased when the uh, new uh, squamous uh, epithelium blocks them the columnar uh, epithelium presents at the baseline and these secretions get gets blocked which forms the nebothian follicles so uh, the terminology is used for the pre-invasive lesions. Pre-invasive lesions means a stage prior to the carcinoma of cervix. That means it is not malignant but it is pre-malignant. So basically we use the term cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia which is a pre-malignant condition of the uterine cervix. Cytologic findings are described with the term squamous intraepithelial lesion and histologic changes are described with the term cervical intraepithelial neoplasia according to the Bethesda system. But according to the last terminology that is lower enogenital tract terminology, this uh, cytology as well as histology both of them are same that is we call them LCIL or HCIL in cytology as well as histology but in Bethesda classification we uh, on cytology we say it as LCIL but on histology we say it as SIN1, SIN2 and SIN3 or carcinoma in C2 also was a previous terminology. So now what is this SIN1, SIN2 and SIN3? SIN1 is a low grade lesion. It refers to mildly atypical cellular changes in the lower, one, lower third of the epithelium. Human papilloma virus cytopathic effect that is coelocytic atypia is often present. That is only the one third of the epithelium is affected. But SIN2 is when almost around two third of the epithelium is affected we call it as SIN2 but is actually it is not a definite uh, place there is always a confusion in diagnosing SIN2 it can either be become SIN1 or it can either become SIN3 so it is considered a high grade lesion it refers to moderately atypical cellular changes confined to the basal two thirds of the epithelium formerly called the moderate uh, dysplasia with preservation of epithelial maturation. There is considerable variability in this category. I will tell you later of markers which can uh, differentiate it into SIN1 and SIN3. SIN3 is a high grade lesion. It refers to severely atypical cellular changes encompassing greater than two thirds of the epithelial thickness and includes full thickness lesions that is therefore uh, previous terms were severe dysplasia or carcinoma in C2. See this is the picture where they have uh, depicted SIN1 that is only one third of the layer is affected, SIN2 is almost half of it is affected, SIN3 includes the whole uh, epithelium to be affected. In the last system that is lower anogenital squamous terminology histologic cervical findings are described using the same terminology as cytologic findings that is SIN1 in the previous terminology is referred to as lower uh, squam squamous intraepithelial lesion that is LCIL. SIN2 is stratified according to the P16 immunostaining. If this P16 immunostaining is positive it becomes SIN3 
3 if it is negative that is specimens that are p16 negative are referred to as l sil and those which are p16 positive are referred to as high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion or sin3 so sin3 is referred to as h sil according to the last terminology so now what are the transformation zones squamocolumnar junction i've already told you uh, this old squamocolumnar junction and because of the growth of the squamous epithelium over the columnar epithelium it becomes the it, it gets shifted to another place which is known as this new squamocolumnar junction the area in between is known as the transformation zone so basically we have three types of uh, transformation zone to know them is important because uh, if we get transformation zone 3 so colposcopy is almost inadequate in such transformation zones transformation zone 1 the new squamocolumnar junction is fully visible on the exocervix and the whole transformation zone is visible transformation zone 2 the new squamocolumnar junction or uh, it is partially present in the endocervix so uh, actually it is not totally visible initially but when we manipulate the cervix with instruments then we can see the full transformation zone 2 uh, transformation zone 3 the new squamocolumnar junction completely recedes into the endocervix and the full transformation zone is not visible commonly seen in postmenopausal females where the endocervix gets shifted more inside so the or new squamocolumnar junction also gets shifted inside so what are the risk factors which people are more uh, susceptible to cervical intraepithelial neoplasia infection with high risk uh, hpv Hi, I'll tell you in detail, HI, infection in immunocompromised situations like HIV, STDs that is sexually transmitted infections, chlamydia, early sexual intercourse less than 16 years of age, early age of first pregnancy, too many and too frequent births, low socio-economic status, multiple sexual partners, oral pill users and smoking. So uh, this is the picture. First, the cervical epithelium is totally normal and once it gets infected with HPV, HPV is a virus is responsible for most of the times for these pre-malignant lesions of the cervix and it can also lead to cancer. So this HPV genome, it gets uh, inserted and this uh, it gets changes in inter-epithelial neoplasia. So in 12% of around SIN3 cases, it gets converted, it gets progressed to cancer. Although SIN1 and SIN2, only 1 to 2 percent of cases get progressed to cancer, that is malignancy. So we have human papilloma virus. HPV is epitheliotropic. It plays important role in the development of cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. And these cells are known as coelocytes, characterized by enlarged cells, perinuclear halo, large irregular and hyperchromatic nucleus. 90% intraepithelial neoplasia is attributed to HPV infection. Pathogenesis, infection uh, occurs with the HPV and mostly it gets cleared in uh, around 2 years but wherever it persists, wherever the infection of HPV persists, it can lead to progression to cervical precancer and finally cancer that is invasion. So cervical epithelium gets infected that is latent or active with virus uh, replication but once this oncogenic HPV virus integrates to human genome that is in H cell lesions it integrates and there is upregulation of viral oncoproteins that is E6 and E7 oncoproteins and this leads to degradation of tumor suppressor genes that is P53 and retinoblastoma. So host cell immortalization and viral multiplication keeps on occurring which will which leads to uh, cancer or precancerous lesions. These are the types of HPV viruses. High risk are commonly 16, 18, 31, 35, 45, 52, 56, 58 and so on. And low risk are 6, 11, 40, 42, 43. 6, 11 cause genital warts but a high risk oncogenic virus they cause squamous or adenocarcinoma of cervix. More than uh, 130 types of HPV are identified. Type 16 is the most oncogenic subtype in most, more than 50% of CA service cases. Type 18 is the most common in adenocarcinoma. 6 and 11 I have told you it, it causes condyloma acuminata and genital warts. This is the new thing WHO called for elimination of cervical cancer. All countries to reach less than 4 per 1 lakh women years, 90% of the girls to be fully vaccinated with HPV vaccine by 15 years of age, 70% of women screened with an effective test at 35 and 45 years of age 
and 90% of women identified with cervical disease receive treatment and care. Screening modalities. How do we screen for uh, CA cervix? Screening is very important, especially in a country like ours, where CA cervix is a very uh, very common diagnosis, most common diagnosis amongst all the gynecological malignancies. So we need to have a proper screening based modalities where we can catch this uh, infection early and treat it on time. So we have cytology based screening that is pap smear and liquid based cytology, visual based testing that is visual inspection using acetic acid and visual inspection using glucose iodine. This is uh, in this is for poor settings where we don't have adequate facilities so we can at least see with acetic acid and leugose iodine that is also known as the Schiller's test. Then finally we have HPV testing which is being recommended these days. So this is the pap smear uh, Bethesda system. We uh, divide the report into ASCUS that is a, a typical squamal cells of undetermined significance and ASCH that is high, uh, exclude high grade lesions. Then we have L-cell, H-cell that is high grade squamous intraepithelial neoplasia and squamous cell carcinoma. PAP test is successful. PAP test although has a low, spe uh, low sensitivity that is around 51% but it is a highly uh, specific test where uh, what we do is actually we uh, take a we uh, in this picture i have shown that with the help of a spec speculum and a year spatula i have a picture of this a year spatula this is uh, this is the a year spatula and this is the cyto brush we uh, fit it into the endocervix and then we rotate it 360 degree so that we uh, get the cells of the ectocervix over here and then we can smear it on the slide and fix it with 95 percent of alcohol then this is the endocervix we push it inside the endocervical canal and then we again rotate it by 360 degrees and put it on the slide and fix it and send it for investigation. So this is the basic cytology testing. Then we have another called as liquid based cytology. Sam samples are collected with the endocervical brush. The difference is that we do not make a slide. We rinse all the samples in a liquid preservative. The advantage is we can uh, we can, uh, the unsatisfactory specimens are much lesser in number with the liquid based cytology. It leads to a uniform thin layer of diagnostic cells and we can remove the uh, excess blood cells and uh, mucus and uh, it reduces the chances of unsatisfactory samples. There's something known as auto pap screening. They use automated microscopes so that the uh, microscope uh, is automatically uh, read and if any anything is uh, found abnormal, then it is manually checked. So this I have already told you, ki, uh, this is the pap smear report, how it is given, whether it is uh, uh, atypical swells of undetermined significance or HCL or uh, sorry ASCH or L-cell, H-cell and squamous cell carcinoma and these are the organisms which can be determined by the pap smear that is trichomonas, fungal in organisms, bacterial vaginosis, actinomyces and herpes simplex virus. So how do we do HPV test? There is something called a self self testing also being applied these days but we have these co-testing. Co-testing means we use HPV in uh, combination with cervical cytology. These tests are commercially, commercially known as Aptima, Covista, Servista, Hybrid Capture 2 and primary test that means only HPV testing is being done that is Cobas HPV and uh, uh, Quagan, Quagan HPV testing. So these are, have this uh, HPV based testing which I have already told you and these screening guidelines are uh, the screening should start at the age of 25 and every five years it should be done with primary HPV testing. When primary HPV testing is not available then either co-testing every five years or cytology alone every three years. ACOG 2018 recommends screening to begin at 21 years regardless of sexual history but can begin early if HPV positive or immunocompromised. FOXI and IARC that is International Association recommends screening to commence at 25 years. So this is for today's class, next section will be taken in another class, thank you.